morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here at the U.S. Soccer Fan head Headquarters at Nike Town here in Seattle, Washington. I am Jackie Montgomery, and I am pleased to be joined by a very great panel of human beings here. We have two-time national championship coach, Peter Fewing, with Seattle University. We have the Seattle Times beat writer, Joshua Myers, and we have the president of the Seattle chapter of the American Outlaws, Sean Wheeler, joining us. And so we, of course, are going to be talking about the U.S. national team playing against Jamaica last night in Jamaica, a very big game for us here in the hexagonal round. So first, guys, let's start off with the performance. The guys getting a 2-1 win in dramatic fashion, might I add, last night against Jamaica. Your thoughts, gentlemen? Well, I, I thought the U.S. did exactly what they needed to do to get a win. Uh, it was a terrific goal. Zuzi's cross. Uh, Altidore put it away. Ricketts. The Jamaican keeper had no chance on the goal. Each team went off the post in the first half. So it was end-to-end. -end. The, the one thing that uh, I think was a factor, it was hot. It's 80 degrees, 85 degrees near the end of the game, 70% humidity. So I thought the U.S. did well the first half, managed the game. And then giving up a goal that late was a crushing blow on the header. Dating. World Cup qualifiers, if you, if you take your foot off the gas, you rest for a minute, it's going to cost you. But for the U.S. to come back and especially have Brad Evans, our local sounder, score the goal was fantastic. It was great to get three points. Okay. Yeah, great. I mean, obviously we're here in Seattle. We have to talk about Brad Evans, right? <laughs> we can go the next 20 minutes talking about Brad Evans. Uh, what a moment for him. You know, I thought throughout the game I wasn't sure if he was as strong as he was against Germany. Uh, you know, maybe not connecting as many passes, got beat a couple times on the wing, but, you know, obviously made up for it with a goal that he'll remember for his whole life, his first international goal, you know, first time playing in a World Cup qualifier. You know, he, he gets start. a great celebration, too, even though it came at the cost of a yellow card, you know. Uh, just a, a great moment for him. Um, you know, obviously, Jurgen Klinsmann is saying he's in it now. He's in the group. You know, he's, he's a part of our, our core. If he's not, obviously, going to be a first choice starting right back when everyone's in the group and healthy. But he, he's continuing to put himself in that, in that mix, which is uh, cool to see for, you know, obviously, as I cover the Sounders and, and for the fans around here, to see him kind of grow and, and really make the most of his opportunities. So... Obviously, he was the talk of Twitter and the Internet and everything last night, and it was, it was really cool to see for him. Yeah, as a supporter of both the U.S. national team and the Sounders, it's amazing to see a guy who, you know, we, we support every week, and he's out there suddenly playing in Jamaica, scoring a game winner in the 92nd minute. I think it was the latest game-winning goal in the World Cup qualifier for the U.S. ever in the 92nd minute. So that's just, we were just shocked. You know, that's our guy. We know him. It's somebody we support day in, day out, and... It's an amazing experience for him, I'm sure. Yeah. Now, what the, a, the nice thing for Brad, he's a midfielder, and he's played a lot yes. with the Sounders. He's played in the attacking uh, part of the Sounders uh, since he's been here for five years. So that's the one advantage that they have, uh, having a, a right back who can get forward, make runs. He stayed home a little more than he normally would, but it's a different thing than the Germany game. The Germany game is not a World Cup qualifier, so... I think his first priority was to stay home, but it was just great to see. He was very composed, and we've seen him yes. do that, turn and shoot, and uh, reminded me actually of his first goal against New York, <laughs> so uh, first game for the Sounders. Yes, that's one thing I thought of. I mean, everyone out there was surprised that it was Brad Evans that scored the, the game winner, but I feel like for Seattle fans, it's something right. that we weren't too surprised because we've seen him do that here at CenturyLink Field with the, with the Sounders. Um, but now let's talk about the character, guys, of this team being able to get that, uh, the three points on the road. There's been a few games out there that they have had the lead to start off with and then actually left points on the table. So for them to be able to concede that goal so late in the 89th minute and be able to come back scoring in the 92nd. What, what do you think that says about this team's character, being able to fight their way back? Well, I think it's progress. I think that's the big thing. I think Colby Jones was doing the analyst last night, and I, I think he said that they'll be in the locker room and they will look at each other differently because they rose to the occasion, they overcame you know, conditions, rode, and still got the win. So I think it's, it's one of those games where they will bring that to Panama. This is now part of their new fabric. So it's a big lift. Uh, you don't want to keep giving up a lead. Mm -hmm. uh, so for them to get the result, get that goal, rally from giving up such a late goal, it's, it's, a real, it's, it's something that the guys will use in the Panama game if the same circumstances exist. Yeah, certainly the spirits could have dropped when they allowed sure. that 89th minute equalizer. They blew a lead in Jamaica and qualifying in the last round went up 1-0 and lost 2-1. So all that could have crept in, especially since a 1-1 result 
probably isn't going to, you know, kill you in the end. You know, you probably could have said, you know, fine, get out of here with a point. But, uh, you know, they, they came back, and, and it's a huge result. You look at the standings now, and, and Jamaica's in trouble. Oh, it's yeah, almost like absolutely. a, you know, five-team race now for three spots and four if you include the qualifiers. So Jamaica almost, I mean, they have, maybe have to win four of their next five games. I mean, they're, they're almost out of it. So just when you look at the ramifications of the result, it was, it was huge for the U.S. because you're, you're chopping a group of six now into maybe five for those three spots, and, and the U.S. is now, you know, tied atop the, you know, the standings in points. So uh, it, was, it was big. Yeah, I think it showed a lot about our composure last night. Uh, we saw just great possession in the midfield all night with Michael Bradley just owning the ball constantly. Uh, I think he was really good. Um, it, I think a lot of that comes from we have a lot more players now who play internationally. You know, Bradley's at Roma, we've got Dempsey, guys who have played on that bigger field. It's not as many uh, smaller experienced guys. But at the same time, we had four MLS players start for the U.S. last night, which is a great contrast, and those guys also played terrific. So, I think one other thing, for Klinsman, yeah, the jury, people have been very, uh, uh, they question a lot of his decisions, mm -hmm. and I think putting Brad Evans as a right back was probably, I mean, Trelundolo possibly would have that if he's healthy, yeah. that spot, but I think when he puts Evans at the right back, and he hasn't had much experience there. He's played a little bit with Seattle. I think people start to say, okay, Jurgen uh, does have some good ideas. So I was happy for him because uh, it kind of took a little bit. <laughs> the players bit. are proving him right. Yes, there you go. Exactly. You're right. <laughs> All right. So now, obviously, we've been talking about Brad Evans, get, rightfully so, given that we're in Seattle and he does play for the Seattle Sounders. But let's talk about Josie Altidore. He had been on a scoring drought, had not scored a U.S. goal since... November of 2011, and now he scored two goals in as many games. Just talk about his kind of resurgence as a U.S. national team player. Go ahead, Josh. Well, if he's on form, I mean, I think he really <laughs> elevates the ceiling of what this U.S. national team can be. I mean, he can, he can be that guy. If he's going to produce consistently for you, I think you're talking about a team that is obviously more dangerous and, and a team that can make a run, you know, obviously in Brazil, but, you know, we've we got to get there first. But, uh, you know, it, it's amazing for him. He's a guy that's obviously coming off 31 goals he scored for his club team in Holland, and, and now all the, the bigger leagues and clubs are kind of taking a look at him. He might make a big move this summer, and I'm sure he's always a motivated guy, but when, when big teams are tracking you, I'm sure maybe that adds a little bit more motivation. So, you know, it's really been great to see. He's been a guy that U.S. soccer fans have known for years now since he was a teenager, I think, and he was a young guy coming up in MLS. Everyone's been kind of waiting for this, so it, it's been great. Yeah, I the forwards have short memories, so in, uh, all Josie remembers is the last two goals he scored and what he did uh, three, four weeks ago, five weeks, that has nothing to do with where he is right now. So he is, uh, the forwards, I'm sure he's riding high, and, and he probably would say, well, I didn't really need to score in those other games, and they weren't as important, and I'm saving them for the big ones, and, uh, and you saw that confidence. That was a great header, great service from Zuzi, so uh, you want them to be, same we see that with Eddie Johnson as well, Eddie yeah. gets on rolls, Freddie Montero was that way, good forwards uh, have short memories, and if they miss, it's the next one that's most important. Mm -hmm. Two beautiful go goals by Josie Altator, yeah. might, might I add. Yeah, they go in anywhere in the world, and right? that's what you want, they weren't <laughs> off his knee, they weren't unintentional, they were strong, and, uh, and he put, put him, he's in the right spot, and he finished with confidence. And so now you mentioned Graham Zuzi. He assisted on both of Josie Altador's goals. And he's the next guy that I want to bring up because we will be missing Graham Zuzi for this next game when they come to Seattle to play Panama because given that yellow last night, he now is suspended for the next match due to yellow card accumulation. So we'll be missing him, a big loss in the midfield. Who do you think is going to be able to replace him there in that spot? Well, you're, you just never know. I mean, you know I don't coach, know. I, I yeah, turn to you, yeah, coach. Yeah, I think Josh is going to play uh, for them. So that, I, I have no idea which way he will go on that. I, you, know, you never know if he would slide Evans forward, right, because he got into the mix. You never know if he would. Uh, that's the question of the day. I'd like to see the roster that's going to come out, and from there we'll see what he does. But, uh, yeah, Zuzi will be missed. The one thing, it's two yellow cards. Yes. And that's, to me, I think uh, I'd like to make a petition to add a third <laughs> yellow card because it's too easy in World Cup qualifiers to get those yellow cards. He'll be missed, so Physical we'll see. matches out there. World yeah, Cup. it's a very physical, <laughs> and the referees have tightened things yeah. up. Two yellow cards seems awfully uh, uh, limited. I, I think they ought to add one more, but 
I don't think my opinion counts with FIFA, so. <laughs> Josh, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's, it's interesting, and, and we've been talking with Brad Evans a lot, obviously, and he's always raved about Zuzi being a guy that will do the defensive work as a midfielder and really made Brad's job a little bit easier, and we've seen with the two assists. So, yeah, Zuzi's going to be, uh, you know, someone that's going to be tough to replace, and you're looking at the other side, you know, Fabian Johnson didn't have a, a great game, I don't think, in Jamaica, and I think even Jurgen Klinsmann said that as much. So you kind of got question marks on, on both your outside midfielders. You got guys like Sasha Kleschen and, and Brad Davis, and you got some options. Um, but, you know, you also have question marks now in the middle with Jermaine Jones. How is he going to do? So you got, you know, question marks maybe in three of the four midfielders that you started, you know, last night in Jamaica. So it'll be uh, interesting to see. Yeah, a lot of choices, a lot of depth. Uh, you know, we're going to see the depth tested of this squad. And... Uh, that spot, because Zuzi's been producing, you know, a, a lot's going to be looking at. A lot of people are maybe going to be wondering about Landon Donovan. Landon Donovan, Donovan but, yeah, uh, I was wondering about that too. That was always going to be, <laughs> that was always going to be the case, no matter what happened. Even if the U.S. won four nothing, I'm sure there would be people wondering about Landon Donovan. But, but yeah, certainly Jurgen's got a, a lot to figure out in these next few days, and there's not a lot of time either. I mean, we're we're coming up in three days as a game, so. I don't know. What do you think? One of the options that's really exciting for supporters here in Seattle is Eddie Johnson maybe filling in there on the wing. Um, mm -hmm. he's, Jurgen's done that before, yeah. put Eddie out there on the wing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm hoping that maybe we can have Brad and Eddie both starting here in Seattle. <laughs> it's a dream come true for a Sounder supporter and a U.S. supporter. Wouldn't that be shocking? If that doesn't have... sell tickets, I don't know what else yeah. will. No. Yeah. We need Eddie Johnson and Brad Evans. Yeah. But wouldn't that be Sorry. shocking that in a World Cup qualifier, it's such an important game, we're putting two guys in two spots they have rarely played. Yeah, right. Exactly. And if it works, <laughs> God bless Jurgen Klinsmann. That's all I would say. But that's, I mean, and, and, but he's willing to do that. Yeah. He's willing to make those tough decisions, and I like it. I think it's fun. I think he's willing to go with his instincts. He's willing to go with uh, what he thinks is the hot hand and what he thinks will work. And he doesn't really worry about what someone's going to say about it. So. And his results back that up. I mean, we've got a win in Azteca, a draw in Azteca. We've won at Italy. Yep. We've defeated Germany. That's a solid three mm -hmm. years, or sorry, not even three years. What is it, 16 months now for Jurgen? And that's an amazing resume in that short of a time yep. period. Yep. So now, Josh, you brought up uh, our next topic. You mentioned Jermaine Jones, also a question mark for the game against Panama. Now, Jermaine left early on in the second half. Um, he was diagnosed immediately after being pulled with a concussion. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that he will be missing um, the game against Panama, but that does put him into the U.S. soccer's evaluation process. He'll be evaluated every day up and leading up to the match, but that does leave a question mark whether or not he will play. How do you think that will um, play a factor? Yeah, it, it's tough. You never want to rush guys back from concussions, brain injuries. It's something Especially you, concussions have been such a big topic around right. soccer and football and, you know, all the major sports. So Yeah, so with the short turnaround, you obviously, uh, you know, you're going to play it safe. You're going to keep your eyes on them all the time. And uh, it's tough. We saw, so we saw Jeff Cameron come on for him and play uh, in that center mid spot. So another move for Jeff Cameron. He's been playing center back. He's been playing right back. He's been playing holding mid. And... He was a guy that also did that at Houston, so he's, you know, it's not going to be completely unfamiliar for him. But yeah, you have a lot of moving pieces. I mean, I don't know, maybe you change the shape of your formation if you're Jurgen Klinsmann to kind of to find a, a group that you think works instead of just plugging like for like everywhere along the way. And, you know, maybe more, you got Dempsey, you can play out wide, maybe, you know, you got all sorts of pieces that you can move around. So certainly this is another factor with Jermaine that, you know, might involve more shifting than just, you know, slotting in guys at certain positions. That's where the fact that we got three points last night gives a little bit of breathing yes. room. So on the concussion issue, I, I, as a coach, I think it will be difficult to, to see him playing uh, on Tuesday. I just can't imagine. The way he came off the field, and I, I don't know if I saw something, but it, it looked, his head looked bright red in one area. I don't think it was blood. I think it was the impact, right? So he looked, uh, you know, I wasn't there. I wouldn't see it, but it, they normally need you know, symptoms free for about five or six days. Uh, and uh, I'm sure they're going to follow it because I'm sure uh, it's going to be watched very carefully how they handle it. It's not going to be pat them on the backside and get back in there, yes. buddy. You're all right. I, I think they'll have to go through the, the standard process and it'll be watched. Well, U.S. Soccer obviously chooses the, some of the top physicians to sure. work with the team. So sure. it'll it definitely right. be made up. The decision will be made by a medical professional. Even though we do appreciate your, your opinion yeah, there, Coach. Yeah. We do appreciate that. Yeah. You looked woozy to me.
So I, I want to kind of backtrack to something you were talking about earlier, Coach. You were talking about just how, you know, a lot of people have questioned Klinsman's decision as, as who he's been putting in. You mentioned Zuzi, you mentioned Brad Evans, and all the question marks have been with MLS players that he's been kind of implementing into his starting lineup. And I think it's important to point out that in last night's match, there were six MLS players starting. Four for the U.S. We had Omar Gonzalez, Matt Beasler, Graham Zuzi, and of course Brad Evans. On the other side of the field, we had Donovan Ricketts starting in net for Jamaica, as well as Ryan Johnson starting, both Portland Timber players. So what does that just say about MLS and the league evolving in the players that they're producing and being able to play at a top level? Well, I think we're seeing the league get better each year. I think, I think this New York football club that's going to come in is going to add to that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we're starting to attract. We have been attracting. I shouldn't say starting. Uh, we've been attracting much better talent from around the world. Salaries are getting stronger. So uh, I, you know, I think, I think the, the goal for the, I know the goal for the Sounders. I know Joe Roth wants to win the EPL. Uh, the fact that we don't play in the EPL <laughs> makes it tough, but uh, Agreed, yeah. he, he has high expectations for the Seattle Sounders organization, but uh, I, I do think it's getting better, and I think the cool thing about Jurgen Klinsmann for me is he trusts the American player. Yeah. His first game when he came out, the things he was saying about, to the players, they felt, here's a guy who's won a World Cup as a player, led Germany uh, to a semifinal, right, and did some things in Germany that were uncharacteristic. Uh, bringing in some trainers from the U.S. for that team. So he's willing to, he lives, he's lived in the U.S. Uh, most of his post-career playing days uh, life and married a California woman. So he trusts the, uh, the U.S. player more than most international coaches would. I think the MLS is getting better all the time. And, and uh, I mean, look what we have here in Seattle. I think that's elevated the MLS uh, and made it more competitive for some of the other clubs Absolutely. as well. So. So I'm excited to see more MLS players contributing to the World Cup uh, uh, campaign. I guess it's not too surprising that, you know, maybe people would have higher expectations for European-based players. So whenever you slot in an MLS player, you're going to have some question marks. I mean, I think that's just something that's always going to be the case. Um, but the guys are, are proving Klinsman right. I mean, the guys yeah. that he's going out on a limb for, Graham Zuzi, Brad Evans, you know, Matt Beasler. <laughs> These are all guys that maybe you're like, you know, I don't know, you got guys, guys playing in Europe at those positions, you know, you know maybe you think you'd go with them, but what, what they're doing, what guys like Brad Evans are doing is they're going to be providing those opportunities for other MLS players, you know, because they're taking the chance and showing that they can play at that level. As long as you, guys, you have guys like that, Matt Beasler, Omar Gonzalez, Brad Evans, Grab Zuzi, they're all playing fine. They're playing great, you know, and so... Whenever you, you can look now to MLS for those filling those holes and filling those positions and you're not going to you know, be, be as hesitant, you know, you're, you're going to say, hey, if this guy is producing an MLS, he's a guy that we'll give a look to at this level and not immediately think to a guy playing abroad, you know, because obviously we've seen a guy like Jeff Cameron who is playing abroad, Brad Evans is, is getting that, that time over him right now. So certainly interesting, certainly fascinating. I can see that shift continuing to go as a... U.S. national team maybe relies on MLS more and more every year. So uh, as a guy that covers MLS, I love to see it. <laughs> yeah. And one thing that I really like about this is it's going to give MLS players more confidence that they can make it yeah. to the international level staying in MLS. They don't have to go to the EPL or Bundesliga in order to get their opportunity with the national team. Mm -hmm. no, as a absolutely. college coach, I like the fact that I think against <laughs> Mexico, we had eight college players mm -hmm. starting in that game or playing in that game. Beasler's Notre Dame. Uh, Gonzalez is Maryland, so I like to see uh, where did Brad play? Was Irvine? Irvine. UC Irvine, Irvine. Ant Eaters. Ant Eaters. Yes. yes. So now I, sure you, you, just, you just <laughs> mentioned <laughs> Omar and, and Matt, and I think it's cool to point out well, one, Graham Zuzi, obviously, we saw his two, um, he's been serving up some great balls in his, uh, since he's been playing, which resulted in some impre impressive goals. Brad Evans, he scored last night, but then also you mentioned Omar Gonzalez and Matt Beasler. I think it's cool to point out that in the three matches where they've paired up in central defense, the U.S. is undefeated. They have won, they have gone two, I believe two and one with them starting in central defense to, together. Which yeah, I, I'll tell you, that's impressive. When Beasler came into the league from Notre Dame, went to Sporting Kansas City, and he was a, I think he was a left back at the beginning, and uh, his college coach, Bobby Clark, was just in town. We were talking about Beasler's progression. He's not the biggest guy, but he's very smart. He's a great team player. And uh, 
and, he's, and they have come together very, very quickly. Uh, Gonzalez, what I like is he, not only his ability uh, defensively, but also offensively, he mm -hmm. can get himself forward. We see that with the Galaxy a lot. So we need And very, big in the air. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. Strong in the air and good offensively and defensively. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see those two working well together. Yeah, certainly the Mexico game was the one that we're yes. always going to look back on, you know, them getting the shutout in that game. And I think even last night in Jamaica, you know, they were probably the two best defenders, I think. I think Jamaica got most of their success, you know, attacking the fullbacks on the wings, and, and Omar and Matt Beasler were, were, were solid. So, yeah, I mean, you're looking at kind of the U.S. national team group right now, you know, Carlos Bocanegra, Gucci Anyewu, the guys that were kind of, you know, that pairing several years ago, you know, are no longer in the picture, and you're kind of looking at a new generation of, of center back pairing, and it could be these guys. All right, guys, now um, enough about U.S. and Jamaica. We don't want to focus on the past. We want to focus on the future. So let's talk about U.S. Panama, obviously, coming here to Seattle on Tuesday, playing at CenturyLink Field. Kickoff is at 6.30 for that match. Now, uh, guys, this is huge for Seattle, getting a World Cup, match, uh, World Cup qualifier here. We haven't had one here in almost 40 years, and what an experience for the fans. Sean, let's start off with you. As the president of American Outlaws, what, what do you guys have planned leading up to this match and for uh, game day? This is obviously a huge opportunity for supporters in Seattle to really show U.S. soccer that this is the best home field advantage that you're going to get in this country. Uh, I think we see that regularly with the Sounders, and we want to make this a home for U.S. soccer going forward. Um, so we've got, I think we sold about 1,800 tickets in the American Outlaws section. We have over 3,000 seats total in the general admission supporters section for this game, which is a huge uh, advancement from what we've seen in other stadiums for U.S. team. Um, we've got... Uh, so starting on Monday night, we're having a night before party. It's kind of an American Outlaws tradition. Uh, we'll be gathering at Galazzo uh, headquarters, which is on Pike Street, 714 Pike. Uh, and we'll be doing a FIFA tournament and general good times to be had all night long. Um, and then kind of one of the Seattle traditions that we're carrying over, supporters tradition, from the Emerald City supporters, they host a block party for uh, large Sounders matches. And we're going to be having one of those on Tuesday from noon to about 5, 5.15 at Fuel Sports downtown. And then we'll be doing the March to the Match, which is another staple of the Sounders traditions uh, from Occidental Park down and all the way to the stadium. Um, it's just a lot of things that we're really excited about carrying over from the great support that we see for the Sounders every week and having that be something that the U.S. Soccer Club can really rely on every week too. Well, that was one thing that Jurgen really pointed out when he was selecting the cities that the U.S. was going to play their home matches is that he wanted to play these matches in cities that had a huge soccer following and had, you know, would give the home team an actual home field advantage. And I think that will certainly be the case here in Seattle. I mean, we see for just for Sounders matches, we have 36,000 on average in the stands tonight when the Sounders take on the um, uh, Vancouver Whitecaps. Thank you, Coach. We're going to be having, uh, yes, I, I will be there, as will you. There's, uh, I think, 52,000 fans, you know, expected tonight. So that's something that we're trying to generate here for the game on Tuesday, and I think it's going to be a, a fantastic atmosphere. One thing that's nice, Ziggy and Jurgen are good pals. Yes, uh, that German connection. Yes, and uh, <laughs> it was at Casey Keller's house. Ross, or uh, Arlo White was in town. So he's doing the game tonight, and uh, Casey had a little party for Arlo. And so well, all of us soccer knuckleheads are sitting around. Casey's uh, on his deck, and, and Ziggy was talking about the fact that you know, he kind of gave us a heads up on what the lineup was going to be for the game um, against Jamaica. But, but that relationship between Jurgen Klinsmann and Ziggy Schmidt is probably one of the reasons why this game is being played on Tuesday here. Oh, yeah. Jurgen's been in our press box a lot. Uh, and, and that relationship, I'm sure Ziggy said, bring the national team here, Seattle will back it. And Ziggy's talked multiple times that him and the communication that him and Klinsmann have about just, you know, players from MLS going there and whatnot. He mentions that a lot during his uh, talks with the media. <laughs> yeah, Klinsman trusts Ziggy. You know, he trusts him as, a, as an MLS resource, as just any type, and, you know, they're, they have a great relationship. So whether it's uh, whatever Jurgen's thinking, whatever Ziggy's thinking, how it, you know, intermingles with the Sounders connections and everything. Um, and yeah, obviously we talked about this game coming up on Tuesday. I, you know, a lot of attention's been on the ticket sales. I think it'll still be a top 10 in the top 10, you know, most attended U.S. qualifiers. So, uh, you know, there's still some time to, to get those tickets. And, and obviously the fan support was going to be a big storyline no matter what because there are some realities to the U.S. national team coming to Seattle when you have, you have to install a temporary grass surface, you know, if the U.S. national team is going to play here. 
You do have a little bit of a longer flight, which is why Jurgen said he wanted to do it after the European seasons were over. So you do have those challenges that are reality. So the thing that, as Sean was mentioning, the thing that you can do to, to counterbalance that is to get crowds that you can't get in other stadiums. So I'm very uh, eager and excited to see what happens Tuesday. Now, you just brought up two points I want to touch on, Josh. One, there are still tickets available. Right now, we have estimated 36,000 sold. We can fit up to 45,000 in the stadium. We're on a limited seating because the Mariners are playing across the street. So, but there, we, we need more fans. 36, I mean, that's, come on. We, we can get more. Yeah. Seattle fans, we can do better than that. But uh, also, you mentioned the grass surface that, um, that the team will be playing on. Now, obviously, at CenturyLink Field, we, we are a turf surface there. We have a turf surface. They have laid down sod. Um, I believe they did it earlier this week. Coach, we checked out the pitch earlier today. You actually jumped down on, felt, you know, felt the grass. I'm faster than security. Yes, so I know. I felt, I felt he, he, yeah. You're, 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 <laughs> Um, but what did you think of that, the pitch that we have out there? Yeah, I think it's good. I think uh, John Wright does an excellent job. He's a groundskeeper, and he's done it uh, probably four or five times now at least at CenturyLink. Uh, the cool thing is they donate that field to a community uh, partner somewhere, so I'm not sure where that grass will end up. Uh, but it, I thought it looked pretty good, and I think uh, there's some, a little bit of seams right now. Uh, but where I was standing was... I don't think I was actually on the field for legal purposes. I think I was on the edge uh, of the field. There was a couple of scenes, but I think that uh, a little more, a couple more days, it should be knitted in really well. I think for tonight's game, there could be uh, a couple of little spots that are a bit of a concern. But it also, it's a, di here's the one, and it's, now you'll hear this from any coach anywhere, any player, both teams have to play on it, right? So that is uh, it, it doesn't make an advantage for either team. Both teams have to play on that surface. But it does make it a little more compact. There's less bounce to a grass field that's laid on top of a, a field turf field because it's field turf, then a very thick plastic, and then grass on top of that. But, you know, we've had Barcelona play on this system. We've had Chelsea. Man U, Chelsea, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I think they, the Seattle grounds crew has it right. Uh, By now they have it down pat, right? They do have it down <laughs> pat. And if you need a grass field called John Wright, uh, the Seahawks, <laughs> Sounders. Yeah. So obviously, U.S. coming, uh, they'll be riding the momentum off the 2-1 win against Jamaica, but Panama, they're also kind of coming off of um, a big, you know, game in the, the, for themselves. They're coming off of a nil-nil draw against Mexico, which, I mean, anytime you can get a point away from Mexico, that's always a good thing. So um, what, what do you think of their, um, how they will be feeling coming into this match on Tuesday? Yeah, they might be the surprise of the group so far. They haven't lost a game yet in this final round of qualifying. They're unbeaten. I'm, I know they got a, a few draws in there. I think it's one win and three draws. But they've obviously proven themselves tough to beat if you have a U.S. team that's going to be making some changes. And uh, I, I don't know what their situation is with injuries or cards, but if they're, you know, if they're coming in with the same group that they've had these four games, you know, they could be tough to beat. They got uh, Blas Perez, right, the forward for FC Dallas, who's been doing well. I think he scored a couple games for them against Colorado recently, and, and he'll carry over to the national team. So, yeah, Panama's right there in the mix. I mean, six points right behind that, that group of three that has seven points. So I think they've been the surprise of the group for me, and, and this will be a, a great opportunity for them to really do well for themselves in the standings. If they could, you know, come in here and steal a result, I'm sure they'll be highly, highly motivated to, to see what they can get out of this one. So, yeah, on the field, we talk about all this off the field stuff, the grass, the fans, and everything, but this is going to be a very intriguing game on the field. Well, they've got five goals, and that yes. Costa Rica has five goals, U.S. has four. So we talked about our defense. Beasley on the side is a bit of a concern defensively for me. If they've, if, if they've got five goals, they're going to come in with that confidence. The confidence of drawing with Mexico is something that uh, every team in this group, anytime you get a point off Mexico, you feel good. So they will be coming in, as, and as Josh mentioned there, you know, they've got six points, and everybody else has seven ahead of them, so it's a huge game for them. And they should be coming in, having scored five goals, having gotten a draw with Mexico, they should be coming in feeling good about themselves. And now, I mean, with the U.S. at home, I mean, everyone talks about winning your home games. I mean, the U.S. had the unfortunate draw of having to play so many games on the road to start off, but now they have, uh, you know, the majority of their last few games here at home, so how important is it for them to get the results, the full three points? I think it's a huge opportunity in the next week. We've got at home against Panama, obviously, this Tuesday, and then on the 18th, we're at home against Honduras down in Salt Lake. Um, those are two teams that currently sit in fourth and fifth. So if we're able to take six points off of those two, we really are going to be clear for sure of the fourth place slot. So we will 
be well in a good position to go ahead and qualify for the World Cup. Yeah, I mean, the U.S. has always done well at home and, uh, you know, done well in Washington. I think they've won uh, their last four games and they came to, you know, visit our, whether it's Safeco or CenturyLink Field or Quest Field or whatever it was, they've, they've had success here over the past 10 years coming here. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're looking to keep that going. Uh, what do you guys have a stat here? Pete, you got it written down. You want to say uh, it? 21, 21 wins. Yeah, 21 wins. No losses and two ties yes. at home. Which I, when you brought in that up, uh-huh. when you brought that up, I, I don't really want to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, you know, you don't Jurgen doesn't it. want to talk about that. The players don't <laughs> want to talk about that. You don't want to. It's like when we went to Rio Tinto and they had not lost in 29 games at home at their fortress and then Seattle beats them. Lamar Nagel, I think, right, right. Uh, did well. You don't. We can talk about that. The players, the coaches don't want to talk about that. But the U.S. has been strong at home, and I think this is wood. So we'll knock on that, that it continues. All right. Okay. Mom's Plus here, word. yeah, Love here, mom. and then as, as Sean mentioned, at Rio Tinto, that's already sold out, right? So, so and Jurgen does want that backing. I think that will help rally this team. So I, I feel good about the team playing at home now and what they've done to be in the top three, top two. Um, and so home games are important. Now we've seen what the atmosphere at CenturyLink can do for the Sounders when they're playing at home. What do you think this atmosphere on Tuesday is going to do for the U.S. national team? It's going to be huge. These are fans, you know, like, like Sean, that have been waiting, you know, years, decades for a huge game like this to come. So, you know, regardless of what the final attendance number is, I was saying this yesterday, they're going to be in full voice because... They've been waiting for, I mean, the fans have been waiting for this opportunity to kind of to show what they can do and, and provide that backing for the national team. So I think it's going to be extremely loud, extremely exciting. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if it, obviously you want as many tickets sold as possible and seats sold, but I think, you know, whatever the, the number is from here on out, it's going to be a, a great atmosphere. Yeah, soccer fans in Seattle have been calling for this mm-hmm. since we got bumped up to the MLS a couple years ago. The thing we've been asking for is get us that World Cup qualifier. Get us that big U.S. match so that we can show U.S. soccer what we are. Uh, And this is our opportunity. So I want everyone in Seattle who's not got a ticket to go buy your ticket now because this is the thing that you've been asking for for years, and this is your opportunity to show what we are here in Seattle. And you can buy those tickets on Ticketmaster.com, or you can go to the CenturyLink Field box office and buy them there. Yeah, we were talking before, 1976. At the Kingdome, it was this surface, but painted green <laughs> against Canada. And uh, I think we won. I think I was at the game. I think we won 2 0. So uh, it has been a long you time. You were the only one that was a live coach. Sean me to nice. rub that one yes. in. But, um... <laughs> yeah. What year were you born? 86. 85. 83. It's nice to be with you, young kids. Yes. 76. Yeah. But that's, I'll tell you what, it is a big deal. And I think with Brad Evans getting that goal, and I, I also think in the back of my mind uh, that. Jurgen Klinsmann is going to look at Eddie Johnson and say, hey, young fella, you want to fire up your country and your home crowd? I, I think that he goes with those kind of emotions uh, as a coach. I think he recognizes that Eddie would love to come back here, and I think the combination of the fact that we have two Sounders on the national team just had a big win. I think we will get a, a surge in ticket sales over the next few days. And what a great homecoming for, for Eddie and Brad, especially after that huge goal for the game winner and now coming back to Seattle. I mean, you, even Jurgen said it himself. He couldn't have written a better no, script for, no. for this. We sit with Brad. So, so um, I do the broadcast with the Sounders, and when we are in the press box, the players who aren't playing will sit in a different area. But Brad comes and sits with Alan and I, uh, Alan Hinton, uh, English international, Right, and he is a good kid. And when he scored, I was in my office last night at Seattle U. When he scored, I would by myself. I jumped up, and I, <laughs> I, I honestly think I said, "I know that guy." And I think our, <laughs> I think all of our Seattle fans are feeling that same way that our guy got a goal, and it, and something that we've seen him do quite a bit. So, yes, you, Brad couldn't write a better script. <laughs> we know him. Yeah, with Brad's good. goal last night, we had uh, the American Outlaws viewing party was at the Atlantic Crossing, which is our home bar. And I think we had probably 300 people packed in there, which if you've been to the Atlantic Crossing, 300 people inside of there is, yeah. it's packed. Shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, you're not yes. moving. And all you see was hands go up in the air, and then you hear a lot of words that I can't repeat um, on this broadcast. <laughs> but uh, it was a lot of excitement and a lot of really just pure joy for Brad that he finally got this opportunity and really made the most of it. I was at the U.S. Soccer, their viewing party last night, and it was a pretty awesome experience as well, just to be with the Seattle fans when that happened. I mean, the whole room started cheering USA, and then when the final whistle blew, everyone started cheering Brad Evans. And so it was a really cool experience because 
Yes, we do know him, and, and, and he is a great person, and so it was great to see him succeed on that level in front of so many people. All right, guys, well, I think we are getting pretty close to wrapping up here. Any final thoughts as we get ready for Tuesday's match against Panama? I, I still can't believe how much we're talking about Brad Evans. <laughs> this is phenomenal. The guy that was the late call-up to camp, he wasn't even listed on that initial group of 26 or whatever that they called up for training camp. Here he comes. Just the path that he's been on the past week has just been phenomenal from starting against Germany to now scoring a game-winning goal in a World Cup qualifier. This is phenomenal. He's, he's a hero. He's coming back to Seattle. And, uh, you know, just, just what a moment for him. What a boost to his career. It's, it's been really amazing to watch. You know, the point on that, too, is, again, Ziggy and Jurgen. I'm sure Ziggy and Jurgen were talking about how, you know, I, I've got this situation. I'm sure Ziggy said to him, hey, I, I am confident that Brad can do that and that trust between the two, uh, certainly paid off in the result, so. With 52,000 fans tonight and 45,000 hopefully on Tuesday night, we're looking at nearly 100,000 US soccer fans coming out in four days for matches. And that says so much about the Seattle supporters culture and the soccer culture that we have up here in the Northwest. Yes, I can't. I couldn't have finished up better myself. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us. But before we go, definitely want to remind everyone out there to go out and buy those tickets. I mean, like we were just saying right now, I, think, I believe we're about 36,000, but we can fit almost 10,000 more people in there. So make sure you go out and get your, your tickets. Like I said, Ticketmaster.com or go to the CenturyLink Field box office. And also, U.S. Soccer has a bunch of wonderful events coming up still be, leading up to the match on Sunday they are hosting the Coffee and Centennial right back here at the U.S. Soccer Fan Headquarters at Nike Town. That will begin at 10 a.m. We'll have the Sounders' very own Chris Henderson on hand and possibly some other guests. And they're just going to be sitting down. There's going to be coffee available for all the fans that come. And we're just going to be talking soccer, just talking about this, uh, the 100-year anniversary of U.S. Soccer and just the memories that Chris Henderson has from his time playing with the national team and just other great U.S. Soccer memories. And then also on Monday, there is a pep rally that is going to be going on at the Cinerama in downtown Seattle, and that is free for all fans. Whoever wants to come out, please make your way to the Cinerama. It's going to be great. The doors open at 7.30. We're going to have some videos. Casey Keller is expected. He's going to be talking, and Klinsman and some of the U.S. national team players they'll be making an appearance as well so doors open at 7 30 the event starts at 8 so make sure you don't miss that and also on Sunday during the afternoon if you're wanting to catch a, a baseball game Eddie Johnson of the Seattle Sounders and the U.S. national team he will be throwing out the first the ceremonial first pitch at the Mariners game on Sunday I believe first pitch is at one o'clock and I believe there's going to be some U.S. Na US national team players there as well so for Peter, Josh, and Sean, I'm Jackie Montgomery, and thank you so much for joining us here at the U.S. Soccer Fan Headquarters at Nike Town. We'll see you next time.